Is everything okay? Hmm? Oh, yes. I can't seem to find my way home, is all. I was just about to make my- I was hoping to head this way myself. The situation is a real pain, huh? I suppose the Sovereign- I daren't stay here too long, though. A lower caste can only linger around these parts for so long before I outstay my welcome. I was hoping to avoid it, but- You mean you- Lord Dohali Nilkaris! But how? Last I heard, you were in Dana competing in the crown contest. Yes, strange, isn't it? If you know another route, we'd be grateful if you could tell us. But, but of course. Please forgive me. There's a wall that sprung up ahead of here, with what looks to be an entrance in it. I thought maybe it was a passageway between the different quarters, but I've no way of knowing for sure. It's worth investigating, at least. I shall go and assess the situation. In the meantime, wait for me here. If it looks safe, I'll come and- You'd really do that for me? A lord troubling himself? Our lot in life is of little consequence. We are both Renan, first and foremost. Oh, why yes? Well, we've canvassed the city for information. No one has the faintest idea what's happened to the city after all. You'd think that info would easily find its way up. Not to this extent, which would indicate that something's suppressing the truth. Given everything that's happened to their city, the people here seem... Yeah, that one guy even said Zugal had stopped listening to him. If that's true, these people are in big trouble. Everything that happens here is attributed to the Sovereign's will. Nothing happens devoid of a reason. To them, it's all part of the Sovereign's grand plan. The Sovereign's plan. There is one thing I'm still not sure about. Just who is this person ruling over Lenigus? The Sovereign, of course. He rules from Rena while presiding over both Rena and Lenigus. Without the lords or anyone in the middle doing his dirty work? That's a pretty big dominion for one person to rule over. I would have thought ruling Lenigus alone would be difficult enough. The points you make are valid. Though I confess I'd never given it much thought before. Here, the Sovereign's total authority is as natural as night turning to day. Come to think of it, I know nothing of the nature of how Rena itself is. <sighs> Shion, have you ever been... <clears throat> no, forgive me. Have you met or crossed paths with, or even heard of someone who's actually made a visit to the homeland? No, I haven't. Neither have I. In which case, I would imagine that... <clears throat> but no, surely not. Can it really be that no citizen of Lenigus has ever been there? Hold up, what are you getting at, Dohalim? Assuming what I believe to be correct, it's possible that no one on Lenigus has ever laid eyes on the actual Renan. But what about trade and communication? There's got to be a flow back and forth. Not if the Sovereign is imposing his will on Lenigus single-handedly. It could be a one-way... But I thought you said that the Sovereign's all the way over on Rena. What if something were to happen to the city, like now? I'm beginning to wonder what the nature of this Sovereign even is. Alfin said he was forced into the role, right? Just before the ceremony. But Sovereign is also the title given to the Almighty Renin Ruler. So which one is it? Whoever wins the crown contest inherits the throne from his or her predecessor, before becoming ruler over all of Rena and Lenigus. Thereafter, that individual is known as the Sovereign. Though, it would appear that the current ruler has gone silent. As for how Volron factors into all this, at this point, I no longer know what to believe. Three centuries ago, I became the Sovereign here on Lenigus. No, not just became, I was forced to. Me, a Danon. Three hundred years later, we cross paths with Volron, who also bears the Sovereign's crest. That's not the only thing we have in common. We both became Sovereign without winning the Crown Contest. Do you think Volron was made Sovereign for the same reason? Because of that ceremony? I can't say for sure, but it certainly sounds like it. But that would mean that two Sovereigns would need to exist at any one time. One whose job it is to rule, and the other for ceremonial purposes. We never did see Volron's body back in Ganeth Haros. Is a new ceremony underway with Volron at its center this time? Could that be what's causing all this strange activity here? Wait a second. You don't think Volron and the Red Woman are working together, do you? The ceremony can't go forward without the Renis Alma. The same one that the Red Woman stole. There's something else the ceremony needs. 
a maiden. And unless there's another one out there aside from me... Questions, questions, and yet more questions. Ones that it seems will remain unanswered until we can establish the Sovereign's identity. If the Forbidden Zone really is off-limits to everyone but the Sovereign, that seems as good a place as any to start. For the sake of liberating Dana, too. Then it's decided. That's where we need to go. One of the citizens mentioned a passage that she thought might lead to another section of the city. It could point us in the right direction. Let's go find it! I didn't realize Ren and suppressed their own kind, too. And yet, weirdly, none of them seem to mind. Am I the only one who finds that strange? It is the way things have always been, so no one thinks to question it. You have experience in that regard yourself, do you not? Unquestioning acceptance of your own servitude. Yeah, that sounds about right. Even so, the quality of life here seems much higher than any Danon city we visited. I used to think it was impossible to build an ideal society without wealth. But I suppose having it doesn't always mean people are treated fairly, either. More to the point, not a single citizen- What if she's not here? What if it turns out we're looking- It's still too early to say- For all we know, she might be able to blend in, move around unnoticed. Tell me, Dohalim, has that skill of yours got a name? And what skill would this be, pray tell? You know, when you're talking to people around town. The way they suddenly become putty in your hands. I'm afraid I don't quite follow. I do. It's called friendly intimidation. Look imposing and speak in a deep, booming voice, and presto, you'll have people wrapped around your finger in no time. I would never stoop to such scandalous tricks. Any feelings of intimidation are solely in the eye of the beholder. So there is a knack to it! How do you learn it? Can anyone do it? Now you've got me curious. Is there special training to master? Hmm, let's see. An obsession with being elegant is a must. Oh, and it helps to be old-fashioned, too. Bonus points if you speak in a way no one can understand. If you've a bone to pick with me, it'd be quicker to just come out and say it. What? They look up to you, that's all. I'm just helping them along. Hey! What's got into Alvin and Law all of a sudden? I can barely understand a word they're saying. And what's with the weird poses? Was it something they ate? I hope you're willing to take the blame for this one. I wasn't expecting them to take me so seriously. I'll go and have a word with them. Nobody left to run the show. I, I mean, their sovereigns up on the Renin homeworld. But Dohalim was only current acting lords have power. Even if the other lords were still around, I doubt they'd. I wonder what they'd think if they were here to. Also, can't. Now that I think of it, aside from Dohalim. Well, yeah. Why to us Danans, they were just enemies. We need. I know. But seeing Ren. It feels strange to imagine the lord. Yeah. If you're that curious about them, every lord in their household has their share. And luckily for us. The people here are unaware of the event. This area doesn't look as badly damaged as that other district we went through. Indeed, if...
effects of Lenegus's transformation appear to be less pronounced here. Or... Ridiculous. Okay. Ah! Seems like the people on Lenegus don't really know much about Volron either. I remember being quite surprised. Pardon me. any love came from a survival of the fittest worldview. And some people here not only shared her belief, but championed it as morally right, too. The Doesn't make... they couldn't see through her. Yeah. There's something I just don't get. What is it? The crown contest itself, in which case the current sovereign of Rena should be whoever it was that won the previous contest. Yeah, that makes... So... Hanfreaked Milgros. So then this Hanfreaked whatchamacallim, he's the current ruler of Rena? The last I heard, yes. Though admittedly, I haven't actually seen him since the end of the previous contest. You're saying that ever since becoming Sovereign, he's never actually shown himself on Lenegus? I guess over Holocom, maybe, but not in the flesh. Same thing goes for the Sovereign that came before him. Now that you mention it, I don't recall anyone ever visiting Lenegus from the Motherland, Sovereign or otherwise. And that never struck you as a little bit... odd? <sighs> when you live here, it's as if you're conditioned not to notice all these strange quirks and discrepancies. The question is then, by whom? And to what end? A new Renis Alma is supposedly created to coincide with every crown contest, meaning each victor is awarded their very own. In other words, if that's true, there should be as many of the things out there as there have been contests. True, but going on what we witnessed in Pelegian, it didn't look like the sort of thing that could be made to order. But if even the victor's speeches have been part of some grand deception, then where are they? Oh, quite frankly, I'm not even sure what to believe anymore. You and me both. Though we are Renan by blood, neither of us even knew that such a thing as a Dark Master Core existed, remember? With any luck, the Forbidden Zone might give us some answers. No use standing around here chatting about it then. Let's get a move on. Varya. Varya? Isn't that the person that Avakir guy was- Shh. But why are you here? Wait, don't tell me you've given up on the crown contest and come crawling back home from Dana already. Nothing to say? Even though you were willing to kill Tarnigan to secure your position as Lord, you still- Kill? I'm here to take care of something. If you wish to continue this conversation, I only ask that you wait until I'm finished. Oh, of course. You always did prefer to take the coward's way out. Even after seven years and living on that Danon rock, you haven't changed one bit. But let me tell you, I haven't changed either. Not a day's gone by the past seven years that I haven't hated you. If killing me will bring you peace, then so be it. <laughs> Dohalim, what the hell are you saying? First, I have business to take care of. If it's vengeance you seek, I will grant you it. But you must wait. My sins are legion. Let me finish what I came to do. 
Then you have my word. I will let you do whatever brings you peace. Sure, that's it. Run away like always. You don't even have the courage to die. No wonder you leave it to someone else. You're just a coward! Dohalim. I apologize that you had to witness that. Is it true? What she said about you killing someone? Each of us have our pasts. I am no exception. Before, back in Menencia, you mentioned having taken a friend's life over the throne. Is that what she meant? The mistakes I made there were not my first, and may not be my last. I will say no more. Did you mean what you said? About letting her take your life if she wanted to? She has more right to my life than anyone. But you can't just... Whatever happens, I have sworn to put an end to the Crown Contest, and to ensure continued coexistence in Menencia. I have no intention of expiring before I do so. There are far too many questions I still seek answers to. Besides, you have just as much reason to kill me as she does. <laughs> Dohalim! Forgive me. Some things are best left unsaid. be some sort of rest and leisure area for the locals. You think? Man, these Renin sure know how to live it up, don't they? <sighs> it... is something the matter, Dohalim? Before I went down to Dana, my friends and I, we... we used to gather at this very spot and play music together. Avakir, Faria, and Tarnigan. <laughs> That was a lifetime ago now. Tarnigan. He was the one that Faria mentioned, right? He was once my dearest, closest friend. As well as Faria's betrothed. <laughs> Despite Faria's lower class upbringing, she possesses a tremendous talent for music. Entranced by her playing, I helped her overcome her sense of inferiority, and introduced her to Tarnigan and Avakir. It was a time of great joy. Four people bound only by their love of music, with no care for social standing. Only the next song, the next melody. A friendship based on mutual respect and a society where everyone is a prisoner to their social class. You really are different, Dohalim. I suppose it's natural you would see it as strange. I would have, once. Now, I think the idea of breaking away from society's constraints and choosing your friends based solely on affection 
is something beautiful that's worth cherishing. Besides, it was that way of looking at the world that laid the foundations for coexistence in Menencia. Your praise does me too great an honor. I was merely following the wishes of my own heart. And even then, it only lasted until the crown contest began. After that, Tarnigan and I became fierce competitors for the position of Lord. Tarnigan had fallen for Faria. By becoming Lord, he aimed to wrest her from her humble origins and raise her to the highest echelons of society. But fate was not so benevolent. What happened? Tarnigan was no match for me in combat. On a level playing field, he wouldn't have stood a chance. But he was desperate and low on options, and he couldn't stand the thought of defeat. You mean he resorted to dirty tactics to try to win, right? But then why does Faria think... Wait, don't tell me she doesn't know. How could I tell her? Combined with the trauma of losing her beloved, and by her friend's hand, no less, she would have been devastated. So instead you let her go on hating you, so she could use that hate as a crutch for her grief? <laughs> That's not the same as running away, though. It is exactly the same. Unable to face the loss of my friend and the burden of my duty, instead I decried my fate and looked away from what I'd done. As for what happened after, that you already know. But if you hadn't become Lord, Menencia wouldn't be what it is now. The Danans there would still be suffering under Renan oppression like before. <sighs> Shion's right. What other Lord would have treated me as you did? Anyone else and I would have been dead long ago. You've saved so many people, Dohalim. You saved me. It's thanks to you that I'm here today. So, try not to blame yourself. The burden you've placed on your own shoulders is too much for anyone to bear. Frank as always. But, I shall do my best to heed your advice. Do you think he'll be all right? Yeah, I think so. He's got Kisara. It's important to have someone like that. I didn't realize how difficult it is just to be there for someone. Sometimes just knowing someone's on your side can be enough. And he knows, Xion. I promise he does. I hope you're right. Yeah? I never appreciated until recently just how much you were always there to support me. It goes both ways. You've helped me keep going more times than I can count. Maybe, but I still wanted to say thank you. I see a medic and supply officer over there. If they know you're with me, they'll likely offer their assistance. That turned out good, if I do say so myself.
Did we really just spend that much money? Damn it. Lenigus soldiers. Any way we can avoid fighting them? That all depends on them. Whatever happens, be ready. It's time! Well, so much for them not wanting to fight! Oh! I am Lord Dohalim of Helda Menencia. I command you! Threat to the city must be erased! No. Have they been brainwashed too? Brainwashed or not. If they want to fight, they got one. That's my cue! Shut him down! On your own! No. No. won't save you! you. Rinwell! Light burst four! Radiant Genesis! Plasma shot! Its armor's too strong! Yeah. Ready to Be my guest! Rinwell! Oh. Oh. Dragon sword! Oh. 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 Those soldiers seem different from the citizens we- Yeah, they weren't big talkers. They weren't in the least bit phased- Indeed, they seem to recognize- And yet, traditionally, Lenigus hasn't been high on threats. A few frenzied zoogles during exp- Their glazed over eyes reminded me of the soldiers and slaves we- I've never seen anything like- Maybe someone doesn't want us here. And the so- What with the Red Woman, the Sovereign, and Volron, they're starting to develop quite the- Anything in the world, and you shoot deity. Come on, 
The earth throbs in pain. Into the shadow! More of the rebels! Annihilation! Mega Red! Enemy Well then, let's keep moving. I won't forgive you! As a soul! No, you weren't! I won't show you any mercy! You've got the spirit! Damn it, baby! Resonate the enemy will talk too. You'll soon see about that. Eternal devastation! Fight it! Hell fire! 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 Hell Small. But a victory nonetheless. We have a long way yet to go. Those soldiers don't... Get lost! Stop! Elusive gear! I am in a bind! Time to fight. cross play! Here's a healing arc! This one's all mine! This one keeps charging us! Last up on you! I'll leave it to you! Where are you going? in a bright and shut Get lost! Snake up! It's 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 take this! Double ah! Demon Way back with the ladder! Illuminate the dark! Is it too late to go? I'm ready! I'm ready! This one's got your name on it! Action to action! Not best in the this ends now! Consider yourself finished! Let's refrain from losing. I won't forgive you! No, that may prove a thorn in the side. Oh, my God. 
This must be it. The entrance to the Forbidden Zone. But it's just a wall. How do we get through? Whoa, we? I thought this was Sovereigns only. Alfin. Interesting. If Alfin's presence still opens the way, it would seem the Sovereign of three centuries ago and now are considered one and the same. What? What the...? Alfin. You again. Tomorrow's the spirit channeling ceremony. We'll finally play our parts as the Sovereign and Maiden. How have you been feeling? What am I Sovereign of? Shuffled from lab to lab, always treated like an experiment. Whenever they look at me, all they see is a Danon. I don't even know what their precious ceremony's for. Let alone what they're going to force me to do as the Sovereign. Tell me, if we're both in the same boat, why do you seem so calm right now? No choice. Becoming the Maiden's not something I wanted for myself. But they... They said Rena's prosperity depended on it. How could I say no after that? Still, as a Renan, at least you got to decide. Good for you. Meanwhile, I was taken from my homeland. You aren't the captive one here. It isn't right what they did to you. And I'm sorry for what it's worth. When this is over... I swear I'll help you get home. I can't do this alone. One more day. How could I say no to that? It's not like I have any choice in the matter anyway. So, what's your name? It's Naori. Naori Imeris. Try to remember this time. You don't act like them. Like the other Renans, I mean. How come you treat me like a person? Because you are. It's true we come from different worlds. But neither one of us asked to be here right now. In that sense, you and I are much the same. We couldn't do this. We wouldn't be able to talk to each other as people. If we didn't see the humanity in each other. So I suppose the question you should be asking is, why wouldn't I treat you like one? You're not like the others. Maybe they're not like me. Here's what we'll do. We give them their damn ceremony. You get me to Dana. That'll be the end of it. I'm taking you at your word on this. I'm trusting you, not them. Nayori. What the hell just happened? That vision... Did everyone else see it too? That person Alvin was speaking to... 
She looked exactly like Shion. It was Naori. Naori Imeris. Isn't that right? <sighs> yeah, that's right. She really does look like Shion. I'm beginning to see why Alfin was so confused. That's all very well and fine, but what did we just witness exactly? It was too real to be a mere hallucination. It was a conversation we had 300 years ago. The night before the ceremony. You mean all of that really happened? We just saw an episode straight out of your past? But how is that even possible? Unless... Could this be the Red Woman's handiwork too? No, I don't think so. Why not? You guys didn't feel it? The moment the entrance opened, it was like a stream of Dan and Astral energy rushing over us. I felt it too. And not for the first time either. It was the same sensation as back inside the wedge. That would make sense. After all, vast amounts of Dana's astral energy were being siphoned and sent up here to Lenigus. For all we know, perhaps we're close to the spot where all that energy was stored. So you think it might have been the energy itself that was responsible for that vision we just saw? But how? And why? We have no way of knowing. Maybe it's not even as deliberate as all that. <sighs> Shion, you okay? Yeah. It was all just a little sudden, that's all. So that was my ancestor, huh? It was like looking into a mirror. Yeah, there certainly is a resemblance. What about you? How are you holding up? Me? Even putting aside the question of where that vision came from, it's likely we'll see more of those. Reliving painful episodes from your past. Do you think you can handle it? I can't just pretend like the past never happened. Besides, if it helps us uncover the truth of what that ceremony really was, it might also lead to answers about your thorns. Alfin. That's not all. This whole time, we've been fighting to free Dana from the Renans. But now that we're here, it seems those same Renans might have it just as bad. I'd like to liberate them too if I can. Which is just another reason I can't afford to shield my eyes from the truth. Whether you're on Dana or somewhere else, you always stay the same. Your indignation and righteous passion, your desire to free and protect, they're all hardwired into you. Not that I'm complaining. Come on, let's bust this thing wide open. Nobody's here. Stay sharp. After that last illusion, there's no telling what could happen in here. Faria, how did you get in here? Wait, something about her isn't right. What's wrong with her? She doesn't even seem to know where she is. Yeah, you're right. She looks just like the soldiers we encountered outside. Summoning? But that's preposterous. She never had that kind of- We can talk later. What? I've never known Fawley to control Zoogles like that before. How about the stone that looks suspiciously like a master core? Where did she get her hands on that? First we handle the two. Then we get some energy. Thanks so much! Aim for the weak frog! Sonic is good! The most powerful orb save you! Raging Lunar Storm! The flame inside is yours to be left free! Take this! 
In a bind? Holy land by the Rising 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 Powerful to control. At this rate, her body won't be able to take much more. Don't believe <gasps> Forgive me. Man, I thought we were goners. Everything okay? Yes. She's only unconscious. Not her. I meant you. Shion, please. Can you treat her? I can try, but I can't promise she'll be back to her real self when she wakes up. All I can do is heal her physically. We're not even supposed to be in here. Maybe it'd be better if we moved her to somewhere a little safer. Don't you think? In that case... I'll take her off your hands. You? Avakir, what are you doing here? I was curious what you were up to. So I took the liberty of following you to find out. I overheard what you said about Tarnigan, about how he really died. I'm sorry, I had no idea. And you believed me? What makes you so sure I wasn't lying? I like to think I know you a little better than that, Dohalim. Give me some credit. <laughs> I'll take Faria. Leave her with me. I know better than to ask what you're up to. But whatever it is, I hope it all works out. Thank you. He seems like a good friend. He hasn't changed. He never was one to stand out. Instead, he was always hanging back, worrying about everyone else. As for Faria, it's always the closest to me who get hurt. You don't seriously blame yourself for what happened to her, do you? Somebody got to her, to strike back at me. Someone who knew me well enough to know that I'd hesitate to fight back. And the same goes for you as well. Neither you nor Faria would have lost loved ones, if it wasn't for me. You're wrong. Kalzalik was the one who killed my brother, under orders from Almadria. As for Tarnagan, if it weren't for the crown contest, he'd still be alive. That and the whole damn hierarchy that makes it possible. But that's why we're fighting. To put an end to this whole messed up system that treats people as expendable. Indeed. Reading society of this blight is really the only way I know how to atone for my sins. You can't atone, Dohalim. 
I know it hurts to hear, but those people are dead. No amount of soul searching or trying to make amends is going to change that. Forgiveness, acceptance, those ships have sailed. So I just forget the harm I caused? No, the opposite, in fact. You remember, you never forget. You keep it in your heart always. And then you go on living. Not for those already passed, but for those still alive. For those still alive? Kisara's right. So long as we've still got breath in our bodies, we can make a difference in the lives of others. Lives being the operative word. That's what living's all about. Being able to still make a difference. Punishing yourself for the past won't make the pain of your conscience go away. Only fixing the problem in its stead. Is that what you're saying? That's right. You have to live for tomorrow, Dohalim, not for yesterday. And not only that, you need to live for yourself and for the change that you still can be. <sighs> I shall try. Don't forget, we've still got a mystery to solve. The Forbidden Zone, remember? Xion. Huh? Thank you. You have my deepest gratitude for what you did for Faria. Glad to be of service. I'm glad we could stop Faria without hurting her. You all did much for her as well. I'm most grateful. Oh, shucks. Do you think Faria was really being controlled by someone? Certainly seemed that way. The question is, who? The Red Woman? The same person who's behind all of this, I'll bet. Whoever that is. Brainwashed or otherwise, the feelings of resentment she holds towards me are real. Someone used her because they knew we'd hold back. If that's not playing dirty, I don't know what is. It does tell us one thing, at least. Someone here in Lenegas is watching us. Someone who means us harm. There's no question. That attack was meant for us alone. By someone capable of getting inside a person and manipulating them like a weapon. We need to find whoever it is, fast. <laughs> what is it, Rinwell? Do you hear something again? Yeah. It's that voice. The will of Dana's astral energy. What? There's so much astral energy. But where's it all coming from? It's almost like... it's alive.
か That was the spirit channeling ceremony just now. No, it was more than that. What the hell was that? It felt like everything was on the brink of... Like the whole world was seconds from... Oblivion. It's the same vision as the one my thorns show me. A vision of impenetrable darkness that swallows up us and everything else. An empty void. A nothing so complete and dominating that there aren't even words to describe it. The end of time. The visions of the apocalypse you've been seeing. If I'd known how bad they were, I... Uh. So, everything we just saw, those were Naori's memories, right? That's right. It was as if her innermost thoughts were speaking directly to us. At least I know they weren't mine. That power flowing into her... It reminds me of Xion's thorns. If they're what's responsible for all these visions she's been having, then maybe... Maybe my thorns are made from that same astral energy? If that is the case, we just found the missing link between your thorns and what happened here three centuries ago. No, more than a link. Perhaps even the very heart of the matter. I've never felt astral energy so powerful. What was that? If it's the same energy your thorns are made of, it must be dark astral energy, right? And isn't that something only Renans have? Correct. Dark astral energy is possessed by Renans alone. And when enough astral energy gathers together, it develops its own form of sentience. If so, Maybe that complete oblivion is exactly what the Renan Astral Energy's will is wishing for. But why? I don't know. Will can be a pretty vague thing to nail down. It's more of a feeling. Just like the will of Dana. But the will of Dana is made up of astral energy too, right? And if that's what's been showing us these visions... I don't know, should we really be getting so involved with this thing? Dana's will would never want oblivion! But you can't say that for sure! Cut it out, you two. Squabbling over theories will get us nowhere. <sighs> Let's keep moving. If it's Dana's will showing us these memories, then I'm as clueless about its motives as any one of us. But if it could lead us to the truth, then I want to find out more. Shion's right. All we can do is keep going. If these really are Naori's memories we're watching, there could be truths in them I was never aware of. And I think they may be the kinds of truths I need to confront if we're going to keep fighting. I'm sorry about what I said earlier. Come on, let's go. Finally. We begin to understand what the Thorns are. Yes, and their source. A ceremony that occurred three centuries ago. But we still don't know how to get rid of them. I just hope we can find a way. That vision we saw. It was as if it was meant specifically for us. What do you make of it? Do you still think the will of Dana might be involved somehow? Maybe it's trying to tell us something. But what? Well, it could be supernatural. You know, like seeing dead people, messages from beyond the grave, ghost-type stuff. Th that's your grand theory? That we're being haunted? Come on, Law. Wait. He might be closer to the mark than you think. What if a person's thoughts and deeds were to somehow become indelibly etched into the ether of a place? And what if those with a connection could then somehow pick up on them? You think that's what it was? Some kind of message someone left here for us? I am merely entertaining the possibility. Whether it was Dana's will, or somehow connected to the Sovereign and Maiden's powers, I do not know. Okay, back up a sec. 
You're saying that if a place is full of enough astral energy, it can somehow show us events that happened centuries ago? More to the point, how does that much astral energy gather in one place anyway? Seems unlikely it happened naturally. Whatever it was, it survived here intact for 300 years. Whoever left it for us, the strength of their intent is beyond doubt. The strength of their intent? <sighs> truth behind Xion's thorns, as well as my own past. I have to be ready to face anything. Whatever happens, I'm determined to save Xion and Dana. What is it? I want to look through that room over there. I'm curious what we'll find. That's the room you visited in your past, right? Sure. We can check it out. This looks like some kind of research facility. A laboratory secreted away in the Forbidden Zone. Why am I past being surprised at this point? Looks pretty deserted. Let's check it out. It might give us a new lead. For the people of Lenegas, the Forbidden Zone is the stuff of dreams. Yet here I am, standing within its hallowed halls. It's off limits even for lords, then? Talk about an exclusive club. Being exclusive is one thing, but how many important facilities let in only the Sovereign? Doesn't that seem a little strange? Strange doesn't cover it. If it was only one room, maybe. But a place on this scale? How do they keep it from falling into ruin? Whoever the Sovereign is, they can't manage the upkeep of this whole place themselves. Did no one ever talk about it when you were growing up? No, not that I can remember. Then again, Sovereigns and Forbidden Zones weren't exactly breakfast table conversations. The Forbidden Zone is a hallowed place, at one with the Sovereign's authority, grounds of the one true ruler who presides over all Renans. That is what we believed this place to be. No, what we were made to believe it was. But now, it is finally time to discover this area's true purpose, and why it was kept hidden behind the scenes for so long. I think I can make this work. Well, can you make head or tail of it? These are experiment records by the looks of it. Reams of them, dating back hundreds of years. Let's see. A composite being capable of controlling Dan and Astral energy so as to convert its molecular and elemental makeup. The creation of a governing central figure taking the form of a Danon. Codename Sovereign. Sovereign? Wait, there's more. Research into utilizing force field crystals for the purpose of stable astral energy containment. That must be the master cores. With all this raw data, there's bound to be records here somewhere about the Maiden and the Lords, too. About the Lords? Why would they be on there? Think about it. The Lords' crests are clearly of a piece with those of both the Sovereign and the Maiden. 
Not to mention the fact that the contenders to the crown are selected from otherwise regular Renin citizens. In other words, it may be that all Renins are unwittingly being made subject to some kind of... grand scheme. What about the Sovereign? Does it say anything else? Where do I start? All I've read so far is the headlines. There's so much here. To sift through all of it would require specialized... Wait. What is it? Did you find something? It's a list of names. With the title, Test Subjects, Sovereign. It's your call. Read it. There must be dozens of test subjects listed here. Hundreds even. All of them failures. Wait. I think I've found one that was successful. Test subject number 1273. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Alphen. <sighs> They've re-engineered me, right here in this lab. Alfin. It's fine, really. What about the others? Was I the only one? Test subject number 10105. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name... Volron. Volron? But that means... He's only sovereign because someone made him that way, too. He's the last one. In three centuries worth of records, you and Volron are the only two subjects on whom the experiment was a success. But what about the winners of the crown contests? Does this mean that none of them were ever crowned sovereign after all? Upon victory, the sovereign shall return to Rena and rule over Rena and Lenegus combined. When a new sovereign is decided, the outgoing monarch shall relinquish their post and live out the rest of their days on Rena. So we were told. But according to these records, there have only ever been two sovereigns neither of whom had anything to do with the crown contest. It's all lies, including the part about the Sovereign residing in Rena. The crown contest was never about deciding a new ruler. It must always have been devised for some other purpose. But even supposing that's true, someone must have been in charge for the past three centuries, right? If it wasn't the Sovereign, then who was it? Crown contests have been held this whole time, in spite of the fact that there was already a sovereign. Me. Meaning that for the past 300 years, someone out there has to have been maintaining that lie. The same person I'm willing to bet is behind all this. The Red Woman? It's possible. But that doesn't necessarily mean she's the mastermind behind this scheme. She could be working for someone else. Someone back on the Renan homeworld. Either way, it's fair to say she's definitely involved somehow. What about the data records? Is there no other information that could help us? Not that I can see. Just file upon file of experiment results. There's nothing here about who's behind all this or what their endgame is, unfortunately. I've barely managed to scratch the surface, mind you. You won't be able to read through it all, but you're welcome to take a look through what you can, while we're here. I'll do that. So this is where Alfin became the Sovereign. Only two sovereigns in over 300 years. So why has the experiment only succeeded twice in all this time? And if that's the case, why keep on doing it? Was there really no other way? Or could there be some other reason? Dohalim. <laughs> Forgive me. Alfin. <sighs> I'm fine. 
fine. I'm just a little shaken, that's all. I knew what I was already, so it's not like it's a surprise or anything. But it's strange. I've got all this rage inside of me, but I don't even know who it's for. I'm scared that I'll put a face to it, just to have someone to blame. If that were to happen, then I... No. And we'd help you fight it, before you ever got that far. <sighs> Wouldn't we, everyone? Yeah. We wouldn't just sit by and watch you spiral out of control. That's right. No good can come from being consumed by hatred. If you ever start to lose your way, you can count on us to guide you back. To remind you where home is. And I would be happy to lend an attentive ear, should you ever have need. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. <sighs> I think I'll be okay now.